Welcome to Southeast Michigan. I'm Dr. Russ and that gives you a little idea of the wetlands, the ponds, uh, the forest, the berms, the cattails that are all in our backyard that provide all these destructive critters uh, here in and around the house. Um, so we've got a lot to videotape to teach you all the lessons I've learned here at this house. This happens to be our exercise room up on what would be considered the third floor, but we're going to hunt today up on the fourth floor. So to get there, we have to bring down some stairs. Are you ready for a destructive critter hunt in the attic? Let's go. Well, we really have a lot of square footage here and you'd think our attic was bigger than this, but this isn't the entire attic. This is a room about the size of maybe a one car garage or something. And uh, it's really our big cedar closet. You can see hunting clothes off to my shoulder. I have an awful lot of litho prints down here, wild animals, and we're constantly changing them in the house to make sure that we have fresh new art, changing the dimensions of a room, if you will, the ambiance of the room. What I did want to show you while we're here is underneath all these bags is 40 Christmas children that we used during the, the Christmas season. Little uh, stand-up uh, snowmen and whatever that uh, add a lot of the Christmas spirit during the Christmas season. But it is this switch here that I wanted to bring your attention to. It's off right now because when we turn it on, I have built a scaffold around this room that allows us to see in every corner of our attic. Uh, there's a couple places if you step off, you'll fall 30, 40 feet. I'm not kidding. That explains this uh, roof line that I have. Uh, but we're going to be in there looking for some eyes looking back at us. If we don't see eyes, then we're going to come up back out, turn the light on, and we'll do the rest of our hunt with lights on. So for the moment, lights out. Okay, we're gonna keep our voices down. There's a door behind me, and that allows us into the rest of this attic. We'll be going in there dark for the first half of the hunt, and then lights on for the second half. Let's go this way. Look for some shining eyes. Do you see anything? I'm not seeing it, but I'll get the lights turned on. Welcome to our attic. As you can see off to the side down here, if we fell, we'd fall quite a ways and probably right on into one of the rooms on the first or second floor. Uh, there's about 12 inches of insulation here that keeps all the heat in the house. It's actually quite cold up here. Uh, down there is a, a louvered access allowing cold air into this area. What you can't see is screen. We had to install it from the outside, but we had bats here. I'll give you a closer look in a minute, but that solved a big bat problem that we had down here. Uh, out here, we had a, uh, a litter of squirrels down there, and uh, I was able to shoot them 
but I also had to use a very long pole, but a cable and put it around their neck and brought them back up because you don't want to leave dead dying animals up here. Right down here, you'll see something that I covered in uh, my earlier videos. This was uh, uh, like a fog, uh, fogging uh, deal, which puts a, a smell up here that would kill mosquitoes, bugs, wasp, etc. But it also uh, put a kind of a wasp odor up here that kept a lot of animals out, I think. Uh, we're standing here right over the uh, insulation and uh, you can see the multiple layers out there that make up this attic. Okay. That might be about uh, 20 feet down there. Uh, plenty of places for wild critters to set up a new home. Well, down here by my feet, you can see two more of those fumigators. They keep the wasp and things out of here. But you can also see a mouse trap, um, uh, rather ma mouse poisoning. And it's right there. And if I look real close, I can see a, actually a couple of little um, uh, black spots. Those are their little craps, if you will. They're scat. And if you can look right over here on off this edge, Renee, you'll see the last trap and they got into that and spilled it out onto the the roof that's fine it's still there they'll be eating it i'm sure let's go to the front window well just past my shoulder we're looking out into the front yard uh here is a window that uh goes out to the front and uh you can see above me is another one of those louvered sections that invites this cold air in. They don't want a, a roof sweating, so they want the cold air between that insulation and the roof shingles. And that one, plus the one you looked at a little while ago, is what allows that. But you'll notice some screen on it. There were bats here too. Bats were hanging from this ceiling. Uh, we had to wait till daytime, let them out. And then uh, we sealed this up so they couldn't get back in at night. That was just one of the ways we took care of those bats. Watch these other videos we did earlier this week and you'll get a couple of answers on a bat problem. Uh, you'll notice I'm actually standing on some snow. And uh, snow in the attic, as you can see. Uh, that's because of snow coming in through those louvers above me. Well, I don't see any critters that we're gonna hunt and kill today. You see evidence that I have been working on the problem. And we'll keep an eye on this because it's a regular, it's almost like a hotel holiday inn waiting for them to come again anytime. I have a good friend named John and uh, John has a cabin up north and uh, he was telling me he has some critters in that attic. And uh, I let him know that what we definitely don't want to do is get them caught up in that attic or trap because they can pee, they can poop, they can ruin a section, and that smell may be with you forever. We've had a, a neighbor here in our subdivision who it took uh, about $1,100 to uh, have critters removed from his attic and another thousand to clean up the mess they made up there and to get that smell out. So I told John, uh, if there's any way possible, let's capture them outside the attic. They've got to come out to eat, etc., and collect them out there and seal up these uh, places where they could get in and out. And he did that and he came up with a rather unique trap. He didn't have a trail cam, but he had something almost as good. You've seen these cameras uh, with the doorbell that catch people stealing packages off your front porch. He put one of them up under the roof line on this trap. And we have a rather interesting trap here to show you of a squirrel who got too curious for his own good.
Well, I'm glad you joined us today for a little winter hunt up in the attic. As you can see, we've got a great location here for all the videos that we have planned. We're only a little over a year old. We have over uh, 1,400 subscribers and uh, over 100,000 viewers from all over the world. If you thought there was some value, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to make sure you're on the list and get videos within minutes of the launch, be sure you subscribe. Keep in mind that what we're about is we just want you to be air gun sharp.